Hello everyone, am I audible? You there? Hello everyone, am I audible to you? Google. Yeah, good morning, Dhananjay, good morning, Subham. So, uh, I hope you understood everything yesterday. Good morning, Gopal, good morning. That's great, Ankit. Good morning, Subham. All fine. So today <coughs> will be start. I am good, Ankit. I am doing really fine, and uh, everything is good. My health is okay. But you need to be careful. Everyone need to be careful as uh, the COVID situation is really bad at this point in time. So everybody needs to take care. And uh, those of you who are eligible, make sure that you are getting yourself registered and getting vaccinated as well. So uh, we'll start today from where we had left. Or uh, maybe, uh, good morning, Diksha. So we'll start from where we had left, OK? So we had completed the tenure of uh, Mrs. Indra Gandhi, and we had seen how uh, she managed to project India as a powerful country in the South Asian region. And because of her efforts, of course, good morning, Sivangi, Hemant, good morning. Good morning, everyone. So uh, now we'll be focusing on the lecture. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. So uh, we know that Indira Gandhi made sure that India emerged as a powerful country in South Asia. But there were certain problems which she could not solve. And before that, because of some internal events, she was assassinated. And after her assassination, Rajiv Gandhi, who had no uh, previous history of being involved in political know-how of the country, started participating and became the Prime Minister of India. When he became the Prime Minister of India, the only problem that he had to face with respect to external relations was the problem of Sri Lanka, LTTE, the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Alam. So you must have heard of LTTE. Maybe uh, yesterday also, while uh, giving some reference, I had made sure that I made you understand that it was once considered as one of the most dreaded outfit, terrorist outfit of the world. Why so? Why such a situation was there in Sri Lanka? It is important. Uh, though the story behind LTTE is not, uh, maybe they will not ask everything about it, but you need to know because uh, you have topics like uh, communal tensions, right? E ethnicity. Such topics are very important when it comes to uh, mains questions. So uh, I'll definitely talk about LTT in little detail only to ensure that all of you can have some glimpse of how things spiral when people living together try to create different identities for different ethnic groups. You, the same uh, case study you can use in other subjects. So, uh, Liberation Tigers of Tamil Alam. Basically, like yesterday also when we, we were talking about an example, I had drawn this diagram and had represented that there are different nations in Sri Lanka. So, if you look at this diagram, the northern part and the eastern part of Sri Lanka, they are Tamil people. Tamil people. 
and rest of the sri lanka is largely dominated by sinhala people the sinhala is population and from the very beginning uh, after they got independence from uh, the foreign powers the sinhala people were the people who were mostly benefited when the colonial rule was in sri lanka so they never gave importance to the tamil population or some other ethnic groups in fact they harassed them in an organized manner the government itself run ran a anti tamil program in 1956 and 1958 that very much alienated the tamil people but these tamilians in sri lanka were not in a position to protest because their population was less and they were amongst the most poor people of sri lanka okay so there was a leader always when sub, uh, somebody is being suppressed some community is being suppressed it is usually represented by some of the people in order to make sure that they get their rights so initially all the people all the leaders they requested the sri lankan government to ensure that the tamilians are treated equally but instead of doing this what the tamil uh, sri lankan government did they launched a program which ensured that the tamilians are not easily represented in the government services many of the tamilians who were educated they had uh, connections with india they went to foreign countries and they gathered knowledge they were educated so their representation especially in the colleges was more they were serving as professors but the sinhalis student never respected them and the government came out with a program where the preference was given to the majority population that is sinhala population and this created a kind of alienation when people started moving towards some of the terrorist activities nearly six insurgent groups emerged in sri lanka who represented the tamil idea and they demanded for a country tamil alam but these groups were not very aggressive till 1977 some sporadic incidents were there but it were never that they could have killed some innocent people it never ever happened but these atrocities continued and a group called as tamil new tigers emerged there here the most dreaded the most dreaded terrorist organization ltte has genesis in this group that is tamil new tigers the leader of the group was chetty mr chetty thana bala singam but he could not last long and he was killed in an ambush and here comes at the another dreaded leader vellu pillai prabhakaran you must have heard this name he was the most dangerous man in south asia he was he is considered still till date he was the one who is still considered the most dreaded man prabhakaran so what he did he was not uh, very much convinced with other insurgency groups that they uh, need to threaten only and not to kill he started killing the leaders to an extent this man was responsible for killing of our prime minister that is rajiv gandhi and he was also responsible for killing of vikrama singhe prabhakaran vikrama singhe bala singha sorry bala singha who was the president of sri lanka so you can of course know how uh, this organization was working prabhakaran went on to uh, create a military consisting of around 18000 soldiers who were ready to die for him he used some of the most dangerous uh, attacks using women and children so and the other thing what uh, prabhakaran did was he made sure that he is called as the real representative 
of Tamil people in Sri Lanka. So there were six insurgents group in Sri Lanka. So before attacking the government, he started attacking these insurgent groups. Some estimates suggest that the, in the civil wars that happened during 1993 to 2000, almost 80,000 people were killed and almost 8 lakh people left Sri Lanka. Okay, so the situation was really dangerous. Uh, but the thing is, how can a group that too of a small country in the Indian Ocean become so powerful? This is because of some of the foreign aid. And you'll be very perplexed even to know that the insurgents, the people who killed Rajiv Gandhi were actually trained by our raw. Research and analysis wing had trained the killers in India, in Himachal Pradesh and some parts of Uttarakhand. But at that point in time, the pressure was very much on the government. Though the Indian government has never accepted this, that our raw had trained these people, but many of the documentaries, many of the evidences provided by Sri Lankan government definitely tell us that these people were trained by our research and analysis wing. Okay, so this was the situation. Uh, the situation was like uh, Prabhakran was very powerful. The Sri Lankan government was not in a position to check any of his activities. He was having his navy, air force and military. So the Sri Lankan government looked forward to Indian government in order to solve the situation. And at that point when Indira Gandhi was alive, she did not uh, wholeheartedly indulged into this thing because she wanted Sri Lanka to make sure that they are dealing with this situation themselves without the role of any external factors, any external country. But uh, when Rajiv Gandhi came to power with uh, consensus of the Sri Lankan government, he sent Indian peacekeeping force to control these people. But the thing was actually government <coughs> sorry the government was more inclined to give humanitarian aid to tamils in jaffna where these tamilian people were being harassed but the sri lankan government had imposed an economic blockade in that region so the help that India was providing did not reach there. Then again India tried to send food grains to these uh, Tamilian people, but the Sri Lankan government chose not to allow. Finally in 1987 Indian Air Force dropped the supply for the people there. Okay, They dropped the supply. Sri Lankan government became suspicious of the Indian activities and they thought that India is trying to mingle with the internal affairs of Sri Lanka. But finally, under intense pressure from all the sides, Sri Lankan government invited the Indian peacekeeping force. This force, which was sent by India, constituted of Indian soldiers. They were attacked from both sides. Sinhala people attacked them saying that these forces have gone there to support the Tamilians. And LTT killed these soldiers because they were representing India on the request of Sri Lankan government. So finally, Rajiv Gandhi was forced to call back Indian peacekeeping force when more than thousand of our soldiers have died in Sri Lanka. And this LTT killed Rajiv Gandhi as well in May 1991. And with the killing of Rajiv Gandhi, India decided not to interfere in Sri Lankan affairs. They chose not to do anything. 
बट फाइनली राजपाक्सा गवर्नमेंट एलिमिनेटेड प्रभाकरण एंड एल टी टी वॉज कंप्लीटली डेमोलिस्ट ओके सो द स्टोरी ऑफ एल टी टी इट्स फॉर्मेशन इज सिमिलर टू वॉट इज हैपनिंग अराउंड द वर्ल्ड इफ टू इथनिक ग्रुप्स इफ टू कम्युनिटीज आर नॉट ऑन द सेम पेज आर फाइटिंग विथ ईच अदर देर कैन बी ए सिचुएशन वेन द डिस्ट्रस्ट इंक्रीजेस टू एन लेवल वेन पीपल ट्राई टू एलिमिनेट other communities so you can use this example this case study while writing some of the questions on communal tensions ethnic tensions you can do that right now uh, we'll move ahead so i'm uh, i think that you are clear rajiv gandhi do had to tackle only one thing but it was one of the worst which killed him as well okay now uh, after rajiv gandhi pv narsimha rao became the prime minister of india and he had also faced some of the things which had disturbed him which shaped his policy towards external world so we'll start with some of the issues that he had to face were the gulf war and unipolar world order he also had some complications related to nuclear program he had also uh, he was forced to face the pressure when ussr was disintegrated and russia was formed but this disintegration made sure uh no anis uh, Indira Gandhi did not try to use Prabhakaran in case of Cold War politics because if you talk about USSR and uh, USA, they were too powerful. A small group like LTTE, though it was uh, very deadly, it could have done nothing to them, so they were not concerned. Uh, LTTE was like yeah twenty two slides so you got the number of slides after that completes all the lecture you could have got up to uh, this uh, indira gandhi era only today you'll get rest of that okay rest of the after our lectures you'll re, you'll be receiving the pdfs it is going to be this way only theek hai pradyum so uh he also established some more relationships like of central asian republics and he while his tenure was there he had to face the problem of nuclear threat from pakistan so we'll look at some of the points okay so gulf war the first gulf war was started in 1990 by saddam hussein you must have heard his name he invaded kuwait and kuwait was the country which was very very important to the that's what we are doing saksham we are doing that we are doing that so gulf war saddam hussein attacked kuwait and kuwait was the main supplier of energy to rest of the west the european countries and at that point in time in 1989 only ussr has disintegrated so usa has emerged as the major supreme power of the world so it took the responsibility and started threatening saddam hussein right but if we talk about india india was not in favor of us threatening iraq the reason being iraq had always favored india on the kashmir question while rest of the islamic world did not support india on the issue of kashmir iraq has always supported the idea that kashmir belongs to india and not pakistan the other thing was 
Saddam Hussein was not much indulged in the activities of the Islamic states and at least towards nations like India he was a secular member he was a secular state with respect to nations like India so India supported Iraq and Iraq has also given assurance to India that it will be providing 2.5 million tons of oil to India in 1990 to 91 in a single year that was the year when USA attacked the country Iraq so when it launched the full fledged war India couldn't say anything the reason being Uh, if you will go back to history of course each uh, these were dominated by the uh, ottoman empire so each country of the central asia was one but it was the time of 700 bc if you are talking about the recent past no it were not so the communist regime in its term europe has collapsed so definitely nobody was there to stop usa but when he launched when usa launched the attack they were not able to quell iraq but india being a friend was expected to give some statement in favor of iraq india couldn't do so but saddam hussein was a very very uh, shrewd man uh, you uh, pradyum i would like to focus uh, your attention to the classes of international relations it is not the class of world history though during the time of europeans it were not but you should not ask such questions which are not related to international relations else we will find it really difficult to cover the course okay so the, your, your question is relating to world history right so it were not okay so uh, saddam hussein what he did when usa sent the ship to capture iraq it spilled oil it spilled oil in the ocean and fired it up and finally usa could not capture saddam hussein nor it can do anything to iraq but the delayed response of course has tempered the relationship of india with iraq though it did not openly said anything but the things didn't remain the same okay now narsimha rao had also faced faced the challenge in the form of nuclear proliferation the world was moving towards accumulating nuclear uh, weapons but america had passed an amendment to its laws which said that any state engaging in nuclear weapons will not be given the aid that they are receiving from usa or any of the international organizations like united nation but it was really ironic on the part of usa on one part it was telling each and every country that they should not support nuclear programs but it closed its eyes when china was supplying nuclear material technology and training the scientists of pakistan to create a nuclear bomb right but clinton administration when clinton was there in power what he did bill clinton chose to force both india and pakistan to sign ctbt the comprehensive test ban treaty the, both of these countries gave some of the reasons that they have threat from uh, pakistan said that it is threatened by india india said it is threatened by both china and pakistan and hence the, both of them did not sign but clinton has definitely known that india was a emerging market it cannot take chances so clinton did not force india to write ctbt but it said that anybody who is not signing the ctbt and if they are uh, pursuing the nuclear program then they will not be given the aid means the situation of india under uh, prime minister rao was not very good neither west was favoring nor our neighbors were 
the other challenge that he faced after the disintegration of ussr was that many of the countries many of the countries which split from india were among the providers of one thing or the other mostly the defense equipments india relied heavily on ussr clinton administration means bill clinton have you heard of sazil he was president of america so the administration which he was running is clinton administration okay so uh, we were talking about russia so when uh, ussr was disintegrated indian government didn't know with whom they have to sign the deals in order to get the defense equipments so uh, yesterday also while i was talking india started having friendship with israel and usa as well because india was completely dependent on one nation and the moment it was disintegrated india was in a a uh, situation of flux india didn't know ki where to go for our defense requirements and that to when we when we have to antagonistic neighborhood okay but soon the era in bilateral relationship started after the cold war era india's dependence on a single country was over usa was so powerful that it was pressurizing even russia not to give some of the technology to india for example india wanted cryogenic technology india was in dire need of cryogenic technology but usa said that india is going to use this technology for the military purposes and not for uh, civil purposes so russia was forced not to give this technology to india but after russia had established itself the uh, boris yeltsin visited india in 1993 and they revisited the cooperation treaty that they had signed in 1971 about which we had talked yesterday indira gandhi had signed that treaty so they started with the bilateral relationship paving way for a new era okay so it is one of the achievements of pv narsimha rao he also made sure that his reaching out to, to some of the countries who were initially not considered by former prime ministers so so he went to central asian republics and today we all know that india is a member of shanghai cooperation organizations so about organizations will be looking in detail first will be after completing the tenures of prime ministers will be moving to our neighborhoods our neighbor states then will be looking at relationship of uh, india with countries who are far and in the third phase of our uh, studies will be focusing on will be focusing on the organizations was the treaty dissolved no deepak treaty is not never dissolved it is upgraded like uh, i said right it was upgraded when yeltsin visited india and the last point is threat of nuclear bomb uh pratyush no chances are very high that uh, you'll get less marks optional jargons the moment you'll be writing you'll be judged because uh, uh it is expected that your point should be uh, better than other people who are reading international relations only as general studies and many a times uh, it can be a situation when uh, the one who is checking your paper will not be familiar with because in general studies paper you write uh, many sections and uh, you cannot consider that the one who is checking the paper is having the background of international relations many a times uh, you'll hear from some of uh, the faculties that each of these subjects are checked by a subject expert but that is wrong it doesn't happen okay the subject experts check only optional papers rest of the paper are checked by some of the experts only but they are not experts of the subject matter they are given a uh, format they are uh, made aware of the things that they need to seek from the answer and they check based on that 
हाँ राघवेंद्र आपको पीडीएफ uh, प्रिंट करवा लेना चाहिए यू नीड टू गेट द प्रिंट आउट ऑफ द पीडीएफ इट विल हेल्प यू इन रिविजन ये नोट्स जैसे ही हैं कल आपने अगर देखा होगा तो यू मस्ट बी अवेयर कि बहुत कम लिखा हुआ है रेलिवेंट लिखा हुआ है और इन्हीं चीजों की जरूरत है आपको बिकॉज दिस इज मोस्ट पार्ट इज हिस्ट्री इट विल क्रिएट ओनली एन अंडरस्टैंडिंग ठीक है प्रिंट करवा लीजिएगा नाउ थ्रेट ऑफ न्यूक्लियर बम After uh, China was helping, I said that. And in 1992, when the Babri Masjid was demolished, there were protests in Pakistan, and the uh, Pakistan government of the time started threatening India under it, the pressure of its own people. So these were the challenges and some of the things that was faced by P. V. Narasimha Rao. And based on these things only, the policy of the time was to remain low key he did not try to venture into things that can jeopardize the situation of india now we'll look at the foreign policy of ik gujral in 1997 ik gujral became the prime minister of india and he was very much convinced that india is one of the powers in south asia and it is also a responsible power and it is surrounded by mostly countries who are weak so he gave a doctrine which is known as gujral doctrine the other thing which is important in his tenure is the refusal to sign ctbt an open refusal and convincing the us that you should not look at india as a foe instead you should come to india because india offers usa a lot of economic opportunities so he did two things which still shape the foreign policy of india so his tenure is really important okay yes deepak uh, writing uh, takes your time but maybe uh, will be writing some of the things most of the things i'll be giving you in this format in order to make sure that you save time and uh, you are having the benefit of having a lecture online this gives you an advantage because we have a liberty of understanding the things well many a times in the classroom program even we fail to uh, explain the things at such length only because we have to give the notes as well you you are supposed to write so almost 30% of the time is consumed in writing so here with these notes definitely you can focus more on understanding more on concepts that is going to help you well in mains and interviews both now we'll look at gujral doctrine yesterday also somebody was talking about uh sajil this ctbt is comprehensive nuclear test ban treaty this was a treaty which says that any of the countries who do do not possess a nuclear weapon till 1964 when china had actually uh tested its nuclear weapon by that time if somebody did not possess nuclear weapon then they, they cannot have nuclear weapon even for civilian purposes they do not they were not allowed but india country most of the countries uh, signed that document under the threat of usa but some of the countries okay anis uh, but this ctbt will help you also so you need to know about ctbt so most of the countries signed that document but india and pakistan and some other countries did not sign okay <clears throat> now gujral doctrine this gujral doctrine says that as india is a major power in south asia then it is the responsibility of india to not expect the reciprocation of the things that it is doing for other countries if some country is weak maybe they can give only uh 5% to us but instead even if they are willing for 5% india being a responsible major country we should offer them more maybe 15 20% so this gujral doctrine was basically making sure that india is offering more to its neighbors okay 
there should not be any arithmetical reciprocity and by following this doctrine only what india did what gujral in his tenure did they initiated a dialogue with sheikh hasina government in bangladesh for settling the dispute over water utilization of ganga okay so there was a dispute and uh, the treaty was signed which actually helped to maintain good relationship with bangladesh uh, be before the relationship with bangladesh had deteriorated after its independence because the supreme leader of bangladesh sheikh mujibur rahman was assassinated and bangladesh was not happy that india did not help them during that time they felt that if indian agencies like raw could have given the information on time they could have saved their first prime minister but after we had uh, an agreement over the sharing of water of ganga things started changing between these two countries and still we have cordial relations right after this uh, after the assassination of rajiv gandhi india has decided not to interfere with any of the things related to sri lanka but uh, uh, under his gujral doctrine uh, prime minister gujral made sure that we are having some good relationship with sri lanka as well with pakistan we tried very hard for the normalization of the relationship but as uh, all of us know all uh, the history suggests that how much india tries to normalize the relation of uh, uh, relationship with pakistan they are into the habit of backstabbing the day they'll tell you that they are supporting india they'll be killing at least two three soldiers at the border during cease fire as well but pakistan like always it was still adamant at the same topic always talking about kashmir issue kashmir issue so the political economic and cultural social friends took a back stage and the relationships never improved but uh, gujral definitely had some uh, gujral definitely made sure that we had some good uh, rapport with china and chinese president jiang jemim visited india in 1996 and both the sides signed an agreement to maintain peace and tranquility at the border uh reserve no uh, i'll be providing your notes these notes uh, you can use them directly some part i'll definitely ask you to write i think i have answered your question reserve right you'll get these notes these are simply the notes that uh, usually students were writing in the classroom when i was taking classes so it is in the printed format you'll get these only these are class notes only okay now a uh, refusal to sign ctbt as i have ex explained ctbt a uh, deepak uh, china have hydrogen bomb i have told saurav these are hand written notes only if you want to write them with uh, your hand you can this was written by some of the student and then it was typed so these are hand written notes only of my previous lectures some of the new things have been added of course for the upgradation of the notes but these are the notes that usually student write in the classroom and now deepak your question is about hydrogen bomb of course if uh, i i'll come to atal vihari vajpayee and then i'll uh, give the you'll get the answer automatically so don't be in haste okay so this uh, he did not sign the ctbt and in fact even convinced usa to come to india thinking of as a market and as investment opportunity right so this is the achievement of gujral and these two points are really important before that usa was only negative about india because it was always concerned about the geopolitics of the south asia it never considered india as a market but with his doctrine after giving the gujral doctrine he uh, gujral also managed to convince you know usa that india is the big market and hereafter the attitude of usa changed towards 
India. Okay. Now uh, the regime change and Atal Bihari Vajpayee was the Prime Minister of India. Okay. He did many a things, though his tenure was uh, very short, but he did many, many things. He made sure that India actually emerges as a power. Even uh, with uh, the things that he did, China never again thought of attacking India. Though they did not attack previously as well, but they were always aggressive. But the things, the things that Atal Bihari Vajpayee did, it made sure that China was averse. Okay, Anish. It's visible, I guess. Now, we'll be explaining all the things. You'll have a look at it. Don't be worried. So he did the nuclear test, though India was sanctioned for that. And uh, he faced this Kargil war. Before that, he tried to uh, normalize the relationship with Pakistan. There were many summits. So we'll look at them one by one. Okay. Now it is cropped. So maybe uh, you need to focus more on what I am telling you. And uh, I'll explain everything. You need not be worried and you'll be uh, getting the notes as well. Nuclear tests and sanctions. So from 11 to 13th May 1998, Indian government conducted nuclear tests. ठीक है अभी दीपक ने हाइड्रोजन बम के बारे में पूछा था देखिए यहां हमने जो टेस्ट किया था पोखरान में उसमें से एक टेस्ट इसका भी था इंडिया इज कैपेबल ऑफ क्रिएटिंग हाइड्रोजन बम ठीक है आपका आंसर मिल गया एंड एज इंडिया हैज रीच द सब क्रिटिकल लेवल एंड वी न्यू दैट वी कैन नाउ वी कैन डू दिस थिंग ठीक है we can create nuclear bombs. So India itself declared that it will not be taking any other tests of nuclear capability. We are already done with these five tests. One among these was to check the capability of the hydrogen bomb. So we had achieved our extreme level. So we did not want it to do anything. Subham nuclear or hydrogen, a fusion hai, fusion reaction hai. Ye aap science and tech ki class mein padhenge. और अगर आप बहुत ज्यादा क्यूरियस हैं तो आई सजेस्ट कि गूगल पे देख लीजिए फ्यूजन या फ्यूजन रिएक्शन आपने क्लास टेंथ में पढ़ा होगा साइंस एंड टेक में फिर से आप लोग पढ़ेंगे ठीक है सो इंडिया डिक्लेयर्ड इट सेल्फ एज ए न्यूक्लियर पावर ठीक है इंडिया डिक्लेयर्ड इट सेल्फ एज ए न्यूक्लियर पावर एंड Also declared a voluntary moratorium on testing of the bombs, but as USA was convinced that uh, India is a market, but it was appealing to each and every country that they should sign the CTBT. And here, the country where uh, it is, it was thinking of expanding its uh, foot for investments, conducted a nuclear test. So. They gave some of the reaction in order to show to the world that they are averse to the policies of India. So initially, they uh, what they did, they came up with many of the sanctions. They said that India will not be getting aid, India will not be participating in this, India will not be doing that. But within two years only, the Bill Clinton government decided to go against previous sanctions and helped India in many other aspects that we'll be seeing when we'll be uh, reading about India and US. Now, uh, Atal Vihari Vajpayee definitely achieved some good thing with US. Even after doing the nuclear blast, nobody in this, uh, no major power uttered even a single word. Barring USA, which had declared itself as the superpower, so it has to do something. Now, uh, Atal Vihari Vajpayee also tried to uh, 
improve the relationship with pakistan gujral also tried that but he moved a step forward and started a bus service from delhi to lahore right and he himself visited lahore in order to make sure that uh, at least the relations which are not improving will improve but as we all know pakistan doesn't have any respect for any of the moves that india has made till date instead what happened they started a new campaign in kashmir that is your kargil war they encroached into the indian land they crossed the line of control and captured some of the pics right india uh went to the world we often do that only we uh, instead of directly retaliating though we started defending ourselves but we again went to the world like us we asked that uh, pakistan is intruding even us said that pakistan should not do this thing and they have to pull back their army but they before they can do that india captured the pics themselves we captured our land right and after that nawaz sharif fall for, from grace in pakistan because pakistan people what they want they want india defeated in cricket they want india defeated in hockey each and every game plus they wanted india to be defeated militarily as well but pakistani army was of no match to india so sharif he was toppled the army of pakistan was powerful what they did they toppled the elected government and parvez musharraf took over the presidency he became the dictator okay so uh, even after such debacle uh, even after some uh, a situation of war almost a war india again tried to improve the relationship and bajpay ji invited musharraf to agra to have a summit but again musharraf wanted india to include kashmir issue the only issue they always talk about is kashmir because they don't have anything to offer and india insisted that first pakistan must accept that they are helping terrorist organizations and they should give in writing that there will not be any cross border terrorism both of these countries did not get convinced for what each one of them were asking for and finally agra summit was also a failure now bilateral economic diplomacy with us theek hai during the time of atal bihari vajpayee uh us visited india the clinton visited india and he was the fourth president who visited india and we signed a deal worth 3 billion dollars right they were looking forward to india as a market because of the things uh, gujral as prime minister has done but it came into practice when our prime minister was atal bihari vajpayee and as we had vibrant diaspora in usa they also saved some of the vision of usa towards india now the other thing that happened during the tenure of atal bihari vajpayee ji was the war on terrorism the countries of the west like we had discussed yesterday also the countries of the west were never convinced that this terrorism is something which can go beyond the territories of a single country they always said that the developing nations least developed nations fight am amongst themselves and call this thing as terrorism but suddenly one fine morning usa was attacked the 911 attacks happened and at that time bush was in power bush came to the power and he was he took it as a offense on the nation great nation that is united states so he talked about terrorism in international media and at that time india 
gosh that this is the right opportunity when we have to talk about these things we can talk about terrorism is a real phenomena in many of the countries of the world so though usa was initially appreciative of the idea that india is talking about terrorism but they get along with pakistan they were always in favor of pakistan then as well so what they did new us pakistan axis was born avoiding this problem they talked about this thing they wanted to attack osama bin laden they wanted to go for some of the terrorists who had attacked usa but what actually they did they strengthened their relationship with pakistan and made pakistan most important ally a non nato ally okay but after some time only what us did they are always unpredictable so uh, this jihadi forces the taliban was being always helped by isi of pakistan but usa without even telling pakistan it ended the rule of taliban in afghanistan good afternoon kunal you have joined late i guess and this was a big blow to pakistan because taliban was a force which it were using against the neighboring states like india and afghanistan to rain terror right pakistan is behind most of the terrorist activities in the south asian region everyone knows right now but some of these events though terrorism was recognized world over but when us the country like usa tilted towards pakistan pakistan was now having a sigh of relief that they are not supporting india and they started sending terrorists and many of the terrorist activities started happening in india there was attack on the kasim kashmir assembly at that point in time there were regular attacks on the armed forces there was attack on believers of the democratic process any of the individuals of kashmir who participated in maybe panchayati elections or some other form of election they were killed by the separatist or terrorist okay and they also attacked the indian parliament and this made sure that india launched an operation known as operation parakram parakram on the border in order to teach a lesson to pakistan ya yeah, saksham talibani rule was ended with the help of Af afghanistan dostum now again bus his father walker bus george walker bus could not capture iraq so duty bound son george bush the son what he did he attacked iraq and what he said that they have iraq have weapons of mass destruction jiski jagah pe sirf tomato mila tha theek hai kuch bhi nahi mila tha if you have seen those videos everybody was laughing at this thing but he made say sure that he avenged the humiliation that his father had seen and Sadd when saddam hussein was displaced he was the supreme leader of iraq so this country went into disarray many of the secretary and groups ethnic groups started fighting amongst themselves to reinstate their power and finally what we know is these conflicts led to the rise of isis one of the biggest problems of this region right one of the biggest terrorist groups in the world but uh, after this thing though india was not in favor of uh, the actions whatever usa did in iraq but india was also very clear that we need some economic support we need support of these powers the great powers so india didn't do anything instead uh, us after this invasion Uh, decided to make ties good with india and we had 
स्ट्रेटजिक पार्टनरशिप एंड कॉपरेशन ऑन द सिविल न्यूक्लियर एंड मिसाइल डिफेंस सो दे सेड दैट ओके दो देर वर सेंक्शन अर्लियर बट नाउ वी शुड लुक फॉरवर्ड टू इंडिया एज ए कंट्री विच इज मूविंग फॉरवर्ड इंडिया एज ए रेस्पॉन्सिबल कंट्री सो यू एस सेड दैट इंडिया ऑफकोर्स कैन हैव nuclear capability and they will be using for civilian purposes only because india is a responsible country and some of our friends from the west like france of course they supported us france is one of the countries which has always supported india in international arena so with these things we had a strategic partnership with usa and it sealed the foreign policy for rest of the time now nobody questions india uh, you'll never hear that india uh, iaea is visiting india to check whether india is uh, diverting uh, the nuclear material for uh, this thing uh, what you call as a uh, military purposes or not so of course we do uh, enjoy a lot of support right now uh, we'll look at the foreign policy of dr manmohan singh he is one individual who has done a lot of things for the country and uh, he when vajpayee ji let down some of the basic premises of our foreign policy this man took it forward and reached to a level where india emerged as one of the giants that we call now in uh, one of the south asian giants this term is used for india nowadays and this is what happened during the tenure of dr manmohan singh so uh, like each of our prime ministers was uh, trying so when uh, dr manmohan singh came to power he also thought of improving the relationships with pakistan okay so he took some of the confidence building measures like uh, again after atal bihari vajpayee failed agra summit still manmohan singh ji met uh, musarraf in new york they also had intensive discussions on some of the bilateral issues the concerns which pakistan had okay so they include ular barrage siachen glacier demilitarization and tulbul project these are like uh, barrages and uh, dams are like what they uh, india is uh, developing many of the run of the river projects so these run of the river projects are dams so pakistan always says that india can use it as a weapon to create flood and havoc in pakistan so manmohan singh ji tried to make sure that they make them understand that this is for the development this is for generation of electricity this is for irrigation but will not be doing that thing but pakistan probably was not convinced but still like vajpayee ji started bus services from delhi to lahore manmohan singh ji what he did he started the bus services from srinagar to muzaffarabad in pakistan theek hai so but uh, these things never ever helped india instead india always was in a false perception after doing such things that pakistan will reciprocate this thing with some good things but uh, pakistan knows only one good thing and that is terrorism so what they did they started attacking places in india delhi was attacked in 2005 varanasi in 2006 and mumbai again in 2006 okay so this is uh, you have seen each and every time any of our prime ministers try to forge a relationship that can be long lasting that can bring peace pakistan retaliated with some of the attacks only either they tried to fight on the border or with proxies sending them to create havoc on our general population and places but uh, one good thing happened during uh, dr manmohan singh was that we had uh, developed a cordial relationship with china like uh, we had discussed the seeds were sown by uh, ik gujral only so chinese Pre premier win jiabao visited india and both of the countries recognized that it's time we enter into strategic and cooperative partnerships 
okay so our relationship became a strategic one so what were the components they decided both india and china decided that we'll be focusing on economic and trade relations will be also cooperating on defense theek hai there will be also efforts to make sure that there are no skirmishes on the borders that usually was not happening for a long time since 187 anyhow and there will be intense negotiations to solve the bilateral issues and this strategic partnership actually helped india and china to focus more on the economic ties until and unless recent few years we definitely know that this relationship was very very cordial the main reason was not that india was being benefited but china was heavily benefiting from indian market it it does have the biggest market of the world and it got access to the second biggest market of the world and it is now many trillions economy china big one of the giants and again during manmohan singh only uh there was one mock uh, more meet where both the countries decided to intensify military cooperation we started exercising with uh, each others soldiers and uh, we decided to cooperate on defense the nathula pass was opened to boost the bilateral relations and definitely we decided to cooperate each other with respect to things related to energy security the energy supplies and you must be aware though india uh, always said that uh, both of us will be cooperating each other in uh, energy supplies but one thing that india was never convinced was about uh, any of the energy or metallic or minerals that can be extracted from indian ocean we have never though we have uh, collaborated for research purpose but india had always made it clear that when it comes to uh, utilization of the resources of the indian ocean india will not support the chinese until and unless they make it very clear that they will not be sending their ships here in indian ocean uh during manmohan singh ji's tenure our relationship which was good with russia improved a lot we had always some of the confusion was there in 2004 like we said after the disintegration of ussr russia again became a power to reckon with but the phase when there was a confusion is star india started diversifying itself india looked forward to some other countries to get the defense deals like we had deals with uh usa we had deal with uh israel so israel and usa together became a partner in defense who were supplying us around 20% of the defense uh, equipment requirement but most part was still given to us by russia but still uh they were not happy and india was mainly concerned about the pricing of the defense equipments india said that russia is selling uh, the things and they are charging more from us and they are taking less money from other people but and russia was very much concerned about the intellectual property rights they were not giving some of the equipments to india because they believe that india will copy that and uh, there was a time uh, i think you must not be aware of this thing but there was a time when uh, we were considered as a copycat L like uh, today we say that uh, china is the one who is doing this thing but there was a time if somebody had sent some of the things to india then we'll replicate that some of the state will do that if central government is not willing uh, not uh, uh checking people then uh, some of the industries will start producing some of the things that are intellectual property of somebody residing in usa or maybe in russia right so we were also a copycat like china at some point in time but today we are not so manmohan singh government made sure that 
uh, these things, the breach of intellectual property is not happening, right? And because of this, we had more close cooperation in the field of defense and energy. Intellectual property rights, if somebody is a creator, is somebody is creating something, then they have right over it. You'll be studying this thing as well in your uh, classes related to science and technology only. IPR rights, intellectual property rights, you'll be dealing with that. So don't be worried. Even uh, like, uh, let's say I'm having a lecture. So if this lecture is a property, intellectual property of carrier bill or me, right? So nobody can distribute this video without the consent of carrier bill. This is the rule. If somebody is found doing this thing, he can be punished by the law. So somebody creating a thing, somebody investing in a thing with the use of his or her intellect is an intellectual property of that person. Okay. Ha, Pradyum, economics mein padha hai aapne, phir, that is good. Yeah, Kunal, trips in WTO, you have read about that, that is good. Economics, some part of it you'll be reading in, yeah, good, good. You have read that, that is fantastic. And one major event that happened with civil nuclear cooperation, with a red carpet welcome to Dr. Manmohan Singh in 2005, USA declared that India is a superpower of future. When Manmohan Singh Ji went to USA to sign this deal, they welcomed Manmohan Singh Ji with red carpet, right? And even China was denied that uh, privilege. When Chinese Premier went to USA, they were really upset that USA did not give a red carpet welcome to China. Right? Uh, Manmohan Singh Ji almost touched all the areas, all the foreign relationships that we have today had some role of Dr. Manmohan Singh. So he uh, was engaged with ASEAN and uh, we concluded free trade agreement in goods and services with Japan. We uh, signed a treaty which says that there will be seamless movement of Navy, capital and people between India and Japan. So there will be easier movement of these things. With Africa, we uh, launched many of the projects, medicinal projects, educational projects uh, based on e-networks. We, uh, uh, we created a universities where African people were welcome. We had cultural exchanges, so we did many things during his tenure. Now, we also focused on West Asia and we had very good use of oil diplomacy for our energy security. During his uh, regime, uh, we concluded the strategic partnership with Saudi Arabia, a major country in that region. We also cooperated with UAE, Kuwait, Qatar, Oman. Qatar uh, signed an agreement with India where it said that uh, it will be providing the requirement of LNG, liquefied natural gas to India. So in his 10 years tenure, he touched almost all the fields of foreign policy that a country can. Okay, And our present Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, he took this idea of engaging other countries all together to a different level. All the prime ministers, whoever took the center stage, who were taking care of the foreign policies of India, were mostly doing it based on some format that was based on idea of a party, some bureaucratic inputs, or maybe based on some of the experiences of other people. But Mr. Modi, our present Prime Minister, did this thing with his own experience. 
his experience as a kar sevak at the lowest level then his experience as chief minister of gujarat we when he had his, the first hand opportunity of meeting some of the diplomats of other countries meeting heads of some of the other countries which saved his point of view towards external world and finally after becoming the prime minister of the country he came um, up with some of the interesting things some of the interesting elements which today shapes our relationship with rest of the world okay so this part is really important i want you to be very very attentive because this is the tenure where your questions will be from rest of the things whatever we have discussed they will give you an idea of what our foreign policy was like what it has become a direct question on somebody individuals uh, tenure is a very glim possibility probably you will not find a question on that a direct question probably there can be a question on gujral doctrine there can be a question on pancil there can be a question on non aligned movement but these are themes theme based questions so uh, we have discussed this thing but whatever will be discussing now will be part of major chunk of your answer these ideas these words that i have written should be reflected in your answer whenever you are dealing with international relations i have used some of the diplomacies diplomatic words that uh, this present government is following while writing your answers you need to use this thing it will give a very good impression that you understand how the technicalities as well okay so uh, the most different thing which none of uh, the previous prime ministers other than pandit jawahar lal nehru our first prime minister nobody was concerned with personal diplomacy personal relationships uh modi ji is following the footsteps of our first prime minister and he believes in creating a personal rapport the other thing very very peculiar about him is interest in learning he wants to learn new things whenever he is visiting some country he'll learn a thing and will come back and try to do this uh, implement it in india why he does so will be looking at how his background in rss has led to his retail diplomacy i'll be explaining what this term is retail diplomacy we'll be talking about his cultural diplomacy diaspora diplomacy economic diplomacy how well he understand the need of the investors how differently he took this neighborhood policy do gujral doctrine also focused on the neighborhood but he gave all together different meaning to this thing okay how he changed the image of india he tried to change it did not change actually the image the big brother image of india to a collaborative ally and how beautifully Man, uh, modi ji have used this soft power diplomacy everything that we are going to discuss will give you a uh, experience that nothing that he has done was not given thought of he has very clear idea how to shape the foreign policy of india so we'll start with personal diplomacy abhi tak kisi ko koi dikkat hai do you have any of the questions barring uh, some of the things which relate to some other subject everything is good each one of you are understanding chapradyum okay anis you don't have any issues so we'll continue with it and this part is really important you need to use these words based on the demand of question okay 
सो वॉट इज पर्सनल डिप्लोमेसी ठीक है वेन नरेंद्र मोदी वॉज चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ गुजरात ही हैड द अपॉर्चुनिटी ऑफ विजिटिंग मेनी ऑफ द नेशन स्टेट्स अराउंड द वर्ल्ड देयर वाइल इंगेजिंग विद द पीपल ही डिस्कवर्ड दैट दिस पर्सनल रिलेशनशिप बिल्डिंग कैन एक्चुअली हेल्प द नेशन कैन एक्चुअली हेल्प हिज स्टेट इन गेटिंग सम ऑफ द इन्वेस्टमेंट्स इट ऑल्सो क्रिएट्स ए परसेप्शन अमंग द लोकल पॉपुलेशन ऑफ दैट नेशन विच इन टर्न हेल्प्स अस इंडिया सो सॉरी सो इट बिकेम ए हॉल मार्क ऑफ मोदी जी टू इंगेज प्रभात आपको नोट्स बनाने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी ये नोट्स ही है सीधे इससे पढ़ लेंगे ज्यादा टाइम नहीं लगेगा ठीक है हेडिंग्स में आ इसलिए तो डिस्ट्रीब्यूट किया है हेडिंग्स भी याद रहेंगे तो मैटर याद आ जाएगा डोंट बी वॉरिड अबाउट दैट बट मोदी जी ऑल्सो एज ए चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ कोर्स ही रिकॉग्नाइज दैट वेन ही इज हैविंग पर्सनल रिपोर्ट विद सम ऑफ द हेड्स ऑफ द नेशन देन गुजरात इज गेटिंग द इन्वेस्टमेंट बट एज ए स्टेट it has limited chances of getting some negative things as a nation you can get things negative you it can backfire which he experienced with the issue of china with masood azhar in these two things whenever uh, he tried to make a report with uh, premier xi jinping but when it comes to united nation security council right then they never support us when it came to azhar mahmood right masood azhar sorry uh, masood azhar they did not support us they did not allow india to recognize that individual as a terrorist right so now he is also cautious about this thing so he has changed his policy of personal relationship a little bit he is giving more impetus to this thing with the countries which have shown some interest right and he also very well understands that this way of diplomacy actually doesn't help him in winning the election but what it does it helps india's standing in the world and it influences our diaspora to create positive things for india theek hai now the second element of his diplomacy masood azhar is a terrorist he belongs to pakistan he belongs to a terrorist organization which india has banned which us has banned okay you can read about him when you'll be reading about security issues now this interest in learning was somehow created in modi ji by our former prime minister atal bihari vajpayee he often sent a uh, mr modi to foreign trips right and when he went there what he learnt was about how these countries have developed so good infrastructure how they have developed these roads how they are keeping their rivers clean so he always tried to understood that from a time when he was not directly involved in the irregular political framework he was more concerned with the things with the uh, his organization that is rss and some of the times he had the opportunity of visiting outside india he learned the things and he tried to implement those things when he became the chief minister of india uh, chief minister of gujarat and from there he understood that if i have to ensure that uh, he needs to pursue india first diplomacy then he has to learn some of the good examples from rest of the world
दीपक आर डिप्लोमेट्स ऑफ कोर्स दे आर इन लाइम लाइट इन दो कंट्रीज वेर दे आर गिविंग द स्पीचेस ओके द सम ऑफ द डिप्लोमेट्स ऑफ चाइना यूएस रशिया हु एवर यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट आर रिसाइडिंग इन इंडिया and our media is going to them and they are giving statements they are printing same thing happens with our diplomats if somebody is from india is speaking in usa their newspapers do write about them so people know them okay don't be uh, disheartened that uh, they are not giving importance to our diplomats of course our diplomats get coverage many a times you have uh, seen in the newspaper as well that our diplomats are in news for wrong reasons right now his background in rss and retail diplomacy so what is retail diplomacy this is a term that you need to know and you need to utilize most of the uh, leaders they try to connect with the people as a leader of a country but this in this retail diplomacy the leader interacts and meets people as a friend as a well wisher he proves to them that he is very much accessible they can come to him and tell him what the problems are plaguing them so it creates a kind of bond between the leader and the people who are the followers theek hai so whenever uh, you must have seen whenever Modi ji is going to some place. He is not only interested in meeting the heads of the state. He goes to uh, people. He goes around people. He meets them, and this is the way he is creating a perception among the masses, our own diaspora, and the local population of that country that Indians are giving a, them a warm response. our diaspora understands that we are thinking of those people and hence they are more than willing to support india in the cause for example you have seen like we had discussed yesterday as well in uh, this covid situation when biden government was not taking interest this diaspora and their local population made sure that they are sending help to india now the other term that you need to know is cultural diplomacy this cultural diplomacy we are putting forward our culture we are making sure that we look that we are grounded to our ethos our values so whenever modi ji is visiting a country and there is a hindu temple out there right he'll be visiting that so there uh, indian diaspora who had left india a long time back they get connected they feel that uh, the culture is, is still existing they are following the same thing which is being followed in india so this helps motivate them to think of india positively and work in a direction that in any of the countries they are residing they'll create a presser they will become a presser group which will help them to create a good perception of india and they'll force those governments to be in good terms of india to help india in the times of need and finally the diaspora diplomacy is a catalyst for transformative diplomacy the diaspora diplomacy is a catalyst for transformative diplomacy iska kya matlab hai what do you understand by this we are dealing a prime minister is dealing with the diaspora in such a way that they are working continuously to transform india as a super power that usa had said that we are a power of future but this is our diaspora modi ji is focusing on the diaspora to help them create a situation in the countries they are living so that india is benefiting the most so how he is doing this whenever modi ji is visiting any of the countries let's say 
uh, he is visiting USA or he is vi visiting UK and for that matter even if uh, he visited some of the countries in the west uh, sorry Central Asia so whenever he is going there he always talks about the problems that India is facing and of course if somebody is residing there some of their relatives reside in India even if somebody has left India 50 70 years back even then some of the people are left behind so he always talks about see India is facing this issue India is facing that issue we have problems with this thing he also talks about some of the solutions that we are implementing diaspora is people diaspora means the people of India Indian origin okay not culture not administration diaspora is people so when he goes there first he talks about the problems then he talks about some of the solutions that the Indian government thinks can work and then he says that these solutions are not taking care of the problem completely and why so this is because of the scarcity of maybe some of the funding issues some of the technological issues some state is not supporting or they tell them that uh, you are residing in USA you are residing in the UK but this government is uh, not very uh, helpful in this specific subject matter so what happens the diaspora is motivated they start using their channels that they have created residing there they work as a peer group they, as a pressure group and they make things easier for the Indian government and the other thing that's happening with this is that the government of the country knows that uh, Mr. Narendra Modi the Prime Minister of India is having very close connect with this diaspora which votes for us right they vote them to power so he subtly gives a message that if you are not going to help India then chances are very less that our diaspora will vote for you and we of course know Indian diaspora is the greatest diaspora we are everywhere we are everywhere you will not find even a single country where Indians are not in a good numbers we can sway the election results of many of the big countries so of course people the governments of those countries are forced to take things very very seriously when it is concerned with India okay and he also does this thing by correlating the past present and future he says that we were together in the past we are still together we will uh, stay together and this dialogue of togetherness creates a emotion that helps India okay and finally when such a motivated diaspora is there so it itself becomes the transformative diplomacy they work in tandem and make sure that the needs of India are met and there is transformation in India with the help of people who reside outside okay now the other topic is economic diplomacy now this is very very important being a Gujarati definitely Modi ji is very very much aware how did Modi thrown Trump out of power Deepak uh, uh, not necessarily uh, this that event was not uh, only important some of the things that happened in USA as well of course the vice presidential candidate of USA was the reason that most of the Indian diaspora tilted towards Democrats but we are going to be at loss because of that I believe so based on the things we have seen in last 60 70 years so uh, I was talking about economic diplomacy our Prime Minister belongs to a state which is famous for trade since the ancient times since the times of Silk Route right so he has a very good understanding of economic needs of the countries of the people as well so trade was natural to him and it became a crucial 
एलिमेंट ऑफ मोदी डॉक्ट्राइन ठीक है सो वॉट ही डेड ही क्लियरली इन शॉर्ट दैट एवरीबडी एवरी डिप्लोमेट अंडरस्टैंड दैट डोमेस्टिक ग्रोथ रेट्स कैन नॉट बी बूस्टेड बाई डोमेस्टिक इनिशिएटिव अलोन जो हम यहां करने वाले हैं उससे काम नहीं होने वाला है ओनली डोमेस्टिक इनिशिएटिव आर नॉट सफिशियंट वी नीड सम जियो स्ट्रेटेजिक इनपुट एज वेल वी नीड एक्सटर्नल इन्वेस्टमेंट पीपल फ्रॉम आउटसाइड इंडिया मस्ट कम टू इंडिया एंड इन्वेस्ट मनी इन द थिंग्स दैट दे थिंक कैन प्रॉफिट दम एज वेल इन दिस वे इंडिया विल बी बेनिफिटिंग टू एंड फॉर हिज इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी ही फोकस्ड ऑन फोर थिंग्स he indicated that our democracy is robust and whoever who is investing in india their money is going to be safe right he in focused on demography he talked he marketed the idea that we have demographic advantage we have a large young population which is ready to work and of course he focused on the demand he focused on the things that are in great demand he gave opportunity to the world to identify the areas which are in demand so that they can easily invest in the thing and then can make profits right and diaspora of course he also invited indian diaspora to invest in india theek hai Sekar, how come India will be at loss by Democrats coming to power? Because history suggests that Democrats were not very supportive of India. ठीक है कल भी हमने ये बात की थी. If you have missed the classes yesterday, then uh, you need to go through the slides that are being provided. You'll understand that. It was an error. If you look, uh, whenever Democrats are there, they'll be more tilted towards some other nation. Maybe Pakistan will be a great friend of them. Republicans are usually friendly to us. Now, Modi ji also has a very good understanding of the needs of investors. Okay, he understands what he'll be offering, what he can offer to them in order to make them invest in India. Like, for example, he himself said in Tokyo in two thousand and fourteen that he had observed that. Japanese people are interested in playing golf. They are very keen about this game. So what he did, he established a world-class golf golf course in Gujarat. ठीक है? And it became a proactive step. He created this thing, and Japanese people were keen to invest in making equipments in India, which can be utilized in the golf course. Okay. so he is very shrewd his economic diplomacy has these elements marketing okay he is not like uh, he knows that there is something so he will not sit idle he'll market that thing he'll tell the world himself come make in india we will give this we'll give that we this is the advantage right so he'll marketing the things he'll be streamlining let's say there was a time when it took around one month or two months to establish a company today it has come down to 10 days so he's he'll he's trying to ensure that like britain we can do it in a single day so he is streamlining the things as well he is downsizing most of the countries in the world they prefer mechanization they don't want more regular people to be employed because it increases the cost of production of services right so he is downsizing he believes more in contractual employment where the benefits given will be less the number of employees employed will be less they'll be working more and more in order to make sure that they stay in the job right and the other thing is modernization he is always he talks about bharat net digital india he talks about digitization so he has modern vision as well he has uh, helped many of the private players and uh, public players as well 
to create digital villages digital towns so he he is a believer of modernization as well and this is as per the trend of the world the rest of the world want these things so he is projecting to the world ki whatever you are getting in west what is you are getting in the developed world you can easily get in india so come and invest in india downsizing will lead to an excessive unemployment maybe but it also gives opportunity to some of the industrialists to create uh, more production points maybe he can produce more he can employ for producing you'll be requiring more people so it is a economic cycle right seka it is not always you cannot predict this thing okay but uh, will not be focusing on economics will be focusing on international relations and his idea of this neighborhood policy though it was in existence since we got independence it was explicitly mentioned in gujarat doctrine right but modi ji with his idea of economic diplomacy what he did he added this idea he added this idea of economy with the neighbors he focused on aggressive economic trade with the neighbors and if india is giving benefit to them definitely they will be more inclined because india is amongst the developed one in south asia china and india are better off as compared to rest of the neighbors of india so when we are giving them a glimpse that they can benefit while associating with india with our trade they'll definitely have a different perception of india right he also focused on connectivity he uh, talked about creating connecting the neighbors via ship maybe like uh, your kaladan project he talked about uh, udan connecting with southeast asia right so he he also believed in connecting the countries and these connections will actually help india creating good relationship with the neighbors the great power diplomacy great power diplomacy means the countries having good relationship with the powers like usa russia yeah kunal right everything is right okay he also understand that the politics within india is more influenced by having good relations with our neighbors if the relationship with nepal is bad bihar gets impacted right if our relationship with tamil uh, sorry sri lanka is bad then tamil nadu gets impacted if we are fighting china then jammu and kashmir and arunachal pradesh are indirectly impacted they are at loss their people suffer so it is more of his political interest as well so with this economic angle of uh, neighborhood policy he has tried to convince our neighbors that they should create a good relationship like you have seen in the case of china as well the moment indians started boycotting the chinese application chinese products they toned down it effects right so it can have positive negative impacts now uh, modi ji also tried to change the image of india from big brother to a collaborative ally most of the time whole of the world whole of our neighbors will always complain that india follows a policy where it always acts as a big brother and they tackle any of the issues with the neighbors with high handedness but modi ji tried to change this thing when he became the prime minister of the country they invited the all the neighbors so with this gesture only he instilled some kind of confidence in amongst our neighbors that he'll not be treating them as a big brother 
right now the soft power diplomacy india is always known for this diplomacy the soft power diplomacy right but modi ji took this thing to all together different level modi ji what he did he pitched for some of the things like international yoga day should be recognized internationally okay yoga must be recognized 21st june he pitched for it or he started giving spiritual texts to his counterparts right so in this way he is transmitting the cultural part to other countries he was he is making other nations to know that we have a cultural heritage that is worth knowing okay so after knowing all this thing basically uh, these are all the elements that is shaping the policy of present government these are the things just a second okay so but with all such things what this government is doing this government is trying to project itself as a balancing power india now doesn't wants to be seen as weak but it aspires to be a leading power and so we have a basically this government has three step foreign policy the first thing is observe and then react to international events previous governments usually chose not to react on many of the events happening in the world but uh amit diplomacy diplomacy is the way we deal with people theek hai isi ko diplomacy kehte hain ki aap you are uh, dealing in a way that you are getting things done without hurting the sentiments of someone who is in front of you this is diplomacy in diplomacy in common parlance as a world parlance as well theek hai so first we'll observe the thing and then we'll react right like israel making wall with palestine so we watched for a time when everyone body was reacting we were silent for some amount of time and then we thought that it is uh, it will be better in our part to make sure that we tell them that this is not the right policy so we did that though we have good relations with israel but israel even understands that it will not get support in each and everything okay the second thing is if needed infuse energy to shape international events now we are focusing on participating as well we are focusing on creating an environment where things can be get done as per the requirement of india or nations like india for example you must have read in economics that in wto india is leading the developing countries in many of the negotiations so we are doing this thing right and some of the times play role to drive the events even india is coming forward and making sure that it is creating an agenda for the things which are important like we are pitching against terrorism every now and then we are pitching for climate change treaties we are doing many a things on our own initiative okay so these things were seen in india when we were talking about the ocean strategy in our economic diplomacy developmental diplomacy when we are reaching africa then also the, all these three points are involved when we are re, uh, acting on east policy act east policy we are doing all these three things so whatever is uh, the field of 
इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ इंडिया नाउ वी हैव दिस पॉलिसी ठीक है सो द रिलेशनशिप्स इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द रिलेशनशिप्स विल सी कंट्री वाइज बिकॉज विल बी हैविंग क्वेश्चन सो बेसिक थीम्स बिहाइंड आर एक्सटर्नल रिलेशन इन दिस गवर्नमेंट इज फ्रॉम दिस परस्पेक्टिव ओनली एंड नाउ विल मूव फॉरवर्ड टू द नाइबरिंग कंट्रीज रिलेशनशिप विद द नाइबरिंग कंट्रीज and the most part with in this also will be focusing more on the things that has ha happened in the last decade most of the focus on the things whatever is happening in last 2 3 years contemporary things uh so uh, now i want you uh, guys to have pen and paper and whatever now i'm going to discuss you need to write all of that okay you have to note it down because i'll be uh, discussing now on things related to the uh, formation of the relationship with our neighbors how naturally some of the relationship is built so on some of the things which uh, government doesn't have control over like uh, yesterday only Uh, i had talked about some of the things like himalayas so we'll be looking at details and then from tomorrow we'll be taking each individual country and we'll try to understand the relationship in toto okay so you have to, uh, one minute make sure that uh, you are ready with pen and paper so we'll be discussing this i'll give you time and you are supposed to note the things that i'll be speaking maybe i'll give you a time a uh, dictation of some of the things but most of the things i expect you to note down when i am discussing and uh, just one minute i am coming back so uh, uh devam uh, this is uh yeah this uh, this is my own enterprise you can say in a way it doesn't belongs to uh but uh, of course we the classes are important right so everybody is ready so uh, we'll be talking about relationship with neighboring states and i want you to understand this thing it is going to help you not only in international relations it will help you to shape your essays well it is also going to help those people who are having uh, their optional as a uh, internet uh, psir and of course it is going to help those people who have geography as their optional okay so it is important for all these people rest of gs of course it is important but these two optionals are going to benefit more geography plus psir okay so we'll be talking about the relationship based on the geography the location okay the first point is based on geography some part i had discussed yesterday but uh, i want you to understand from the perspective of geography first 
okay so for example if we take let's say if india was somewhere here theek hai pakistan was somewhere here and this is the usual position that india has okay so if you are looking at this map of course you know that if india could have been or pakistan could have been in africa then usa or russia must not have been interested in this why because this is a desert region right and this is a dark continent they cannot sell their products there because these these countries don't have such amount of money so of course if china was not here we could have not have this problems right so first thing is you should be very clear about this thing that the basic relationship that has been created between the nations is based on their geographical location whatever is happening today is happening only because we have a different location right we are with neighbors definitely we are close so definitely we are going to have some kind of relationship theek hai ye clear hai you don't need to draw this diagram but you need to maybe geography so what you can write in this geography plays both positive and negative roles in influencing the relationship geography plays both positive and negative roles in influencing the relationship theek hai note it down geography plays both positive and negative roles in influencing the relationship now we'll see some of the examples theek hai i i hope everybody has noted th this thing down geography plays both positive and negative roles in the relationship amongst neighbors theek hai now first thing let's take example of one of the physiographic feature that is himalayas we were talking about both positive and negative relationship okay yesterday also i had taken this example and i had suggested i want you to draw these diagrams also these are simple so of course you can draw and while writing your answers you can use such uh, simple diagrams it's always a good idea to draw such diagrams in exams theek hai now here we have himalayas right this himalaya is shaping our relationship like yesterday i talked about the cultural difference that has been created chinese culture and indic culture and what it brings like yesterday i said it brings suspicion because of the different culture everybody is clear noting it down so what exactly it is why different cultures not much exchange of information
if the information exchange was there then different cultures could have not existed there must have been some kind of intermixing right तो क्लियर है डिफरेंट कल्चर्स क्यों बन गए ये सस्पीशन क्यों है एज वे ऑफ लाइफ इज डिफरेंट ठीक है इवन इफ यूल मेक दिस थिंग ओनली even if you make this thing only it won't uh, you'll be understanding by this you don't need many of the statements just draw the diagram this will be available in a minute i hope i am visible now again so you are clear with this so it is a negative impact right the first thing that it has created has created now i am visible asu i guess there was some problem with the battery right so draw this diagram i want you to draw this diagram make it fast i hope everybody is done with this now we'll look at the other aspect of himalaya only theek okay? hai what is the other as aspect we have boundary disputes right another negative aspect is boundary dispute so why do we have boundary dispute okay anis now uh, come to boundary dispute let's say the boundary dispute because of the himalayas we have dispute with because of the himalayas now indo china if you're looking at this is if the boundary could have been like this right straight boundary this is territory a this is territory b so it is very easy to define right but our boundary is like what these himalayas are like this and this is a very difficult terrain theek hai so it naturally becomes difficult we cannot draw a boundary because we cannot go and measure the exact points because these are uh, uh, mountains around 5 6 kilometers high plus they are densely forested so we cannot do that right so boundary dispute because we do not have linear boundaries no linear boundaries even it if it is not for this modern times still we could have had disputes only because this is not possible to demarcate these because the it is not clear no linear boundaries and here boundary is not clear i hope you are clear with this idea as well so we talked about if i consider india and china definitely you understand that uh, 
these are the two negative things because of a geographical feature that is himalaya everybody is done so let's move to some positive aspect some positive aspect okay the passes like i said yesterday as well passes in himalaya so what these passes are doing these passes are path of cultural exchanges right so here we have so some cordial relation with some part of tibet right we had discussed this what it does buddhism reached china so small cultural links everybody is done so while writing even if somebody uh, is not very much aware of what is happening you can correlate these things with today's uh things whatever is happening when india was Ch and china was fighting over pangong song definitely you can say that uh, the boundaries are not clear because it is a mountainous region so if you understand these things things become easy for you you'll always be in a position to write a answer with few statements and such diagrams definitely you'll get good marks and the diagrams has to be simple it uh, you do not need to have expertise these schematics are more than sufficient to give you few extra marks so use these usually uh, you must have seen that candidates with geography optional tend to score more in uh some of the papers only because of this thing they know how to use such thing right but this is very simple thing anybody can do that you need not have subject specialization to do that this is the way you need to write your answers you'll be writing few statements some rough sketches and you'll create an impression now let's say this is i talked about china let's consider pakistan now <clears throat> let's see how geography is influencing this relationship theek hai ab india aur pakistan ki hum baat karte hain to we meet in three different areas theek hai i want you to write this thing theek hai pehla kahan hai himalayan region theek hai ye kaisa hai mountains hai yahan pe dusra kya hai plains of punjab ठीक है दिस इज अनदर पॉइंट ओके एंड द थर्ड सेक्टर इज द डेजर्ट प्लेन्स
the desert plains so himalayan region like we had seen with china this is a difficult area difficult area so tough to check infiltration abhi when uh, pakistan has a motive of uh, disturbing peace and tranquility of india they choose such areas right they choose such area us samay kya hai ki guard nahi ho sakta hai to they enter and then they attack some of civilians soldiers from that area okay a plains of punjab developed area because of natural endowments दूसरा दे हैव सिमिलर कल्चर एग्जैक्टली द सेम कल्चर अक्रॉस द बॉर्डर ठीक है सो नॉट मच ऑफ ए प्रॉब्लम एरिया नॉट मच ऑफ ए प्रॉब्लमेटिक एरिया For two reasons, plains का मतलब क्या है Easy to guard, ठीक है Similar culture एक reason है और दूसरा Easy to guard. We can see who is entering from which area. And now the these desert plains. Now again it is a difficult area, right? this is a difficult area nobody resides here so infiltration is happening plus the land area is of no economic importance so both the countries chose not to measure it properly during the british times and so we have disputes like sir creek we have disputed areas as well we discussed this thing yesterday so whenever you are talking about the relationships you need to focus on these aspects theek hai note it down i'm giving you one when you are done just let me know this will make things pretty simple for you if you want you can draw a diagram as well it is always a good idea to draw a diagram i hope you some of you are aware how to do this thing this is the area of our interest so a rough sketch you can draw india here you can say this is pak this is india and the three regions we are talking about you can show these areas like this the plains and the desert area maybe so it is always a good idea to use uh, diagrams Okay. Yeah, the clear hai, everyone. You have drawn. So uh, 
with practice you can definitely do this thing within 5 seconds is always a good idea to give a diagram whenever you are writing answer usually we think that uh, writing will give us marks but it's always easy to write these points here draw a diagram in the corner of the paper and himalayas just so here difficult area infiltration this plains of punjab just no issues and this thing difficult infiltration plus sir creek issue you can show that it will become easier you'll save time i hope everybody is done with this thing okay so this is a problem area okay but uh, some geographical features if we talk about climate the climate is somewhat similar right of the bordering regions somewhat similar so similar culture food clothing overall way of life so geographical features do have positive and negative impact and cultural exchange as well because punjab plains similar culture we talked about so geographical features of course are influencing the relationship right so uh, okay raghavendra your optional is geography that's good then uh, definitely uh, you have a topic uh, this topic is there a space relationship with neighbors we have this topic in geography and geography is a easy subject if you can uh, you have command over diagrams and if you have a uh, good uh, sound knowledge of uh, the thinkers and theorist perspective i was always uh, scoring around 290 to 300 marks in geography optional when i was giving the papers Uh, uh, my geography was very strong and uh, i take classes of optional as well okay i hope everybody is done with this now we'll look at some of the aspects with bangladesh now we are here we are now focusing on geographical aspects i'll move to other aspects as well i want you to remember some of the things if you'll put your uh, a little thinking into it definitely you'll be in a position to come with more things uh devam uh, i uh, when the classes were open and it was not online then i was taking classes at kalhan but at this point in time i haven't decided yet I haven't decided. I haven't decided. I'll let you know if I start the classes. Okay? I'll definitely let you know. So, Indo-Bangladesh. We are talking about Indo-Bangladesh relationships. Now, uh, this relationship is based on flat plains. So, yeah, ये तो आप भी बता सकते हैं. You can definitely tell कि कैसा relationship होगा. ठीक है दिस रिलेशनशिप कल्चर सिमिलर होगा अभी हमने देखा था वी हैव बंगाली पॉपुलेशन इन बोथ साइड्स ठीक है अब क्या है रिवर है हमारी गंगा तीस्ता अब क्या होगा वाटर इज ए स्कैर्स रिसोर्स तो ये निगेटिव हो गया कंफ्लिक्ट वाटर शेयरिंग को लेके हो जाएगा कल्चर इज अ पॉजिटिव पॉइंट इनिशियली हमने क्या बात कही थी कि रिलेशनशिप क्या है पॉजिटिव भी हो सकता है और निगेटिव भी हो सकता है राइट सो फ्लैट प्लेन्स रिवर इट विल लीड टू कंफ्लिक्ट 
but basically we are managing and having a good relationship friendly relationship yeah right anish so bangladesh geography has an influence and if we talk about monsoon definitely pura ka pura hi similar hai exactly same right indo bangladesh we have seen now uh, if we talk about china ka example we talked about drainage maine abhi river ki baat ki to let's say geographical feature mein abhi ड्रेनेज की ही बात करते हैं बांग्लादेश के साथ भी कंफ्लिक्ट है वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट दिस थिंग इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर एज वेल विथ चाइना ब्रह्मपुत्र in the upper reaches in arunachal pradesh it is known as siang or dihang right so what china is doing india is lower riparian and in china is deliberately doing this thing the effect is still visible in siang the river that is in if you go to uh, the town pasighat in arunachal pradesh you'll see that uh, people will tell you there was a time when uh, siang river was very very voluminous at this point in time the situation is like uh, in winters people can cross the river on foot and it was so massive river a decade ago so this is again suspicion and conflict the same issues with many of the countries right so draw this thing and try to ha huh, yarlung sangpo yarlung dam there are four dams basically which are concerning india so when we'll be talking about the relationship we'll definitely look at the names as well but the idea of doing this thing my main purpose was to ensure that each one of you understand that such diagrams can give you good marks these things works in uh, even optional i'm not talking about gs gs these type of diagrams will give a clear picture that you have a good understanding of the subject matter and you are aware and such diagrams also helps the examiner to check your paper easily right so note it down with pakistan of course in this has been a problem for pakistan you know that in this has been a problem now as nepal with nepal the issue of koshi pakistan indus so each and every state we are connected there is one or the other issue right and many a times what is happening bhutan is a very uh, dear friend lower riparian means uh, purnima the state which is on the lower side where the river is flowing means the water is coming from some other state that is upper riparian which will utilize the water in the upper reaches of the river and the other one which will be utilizing the water in the lower reaches of the river is lower riparian theek hai अभी भूटान के साथ क्या दिक्कत है नेपाल पाकिस्तान बांग्लादेश दीज आर मेजर रिवर्स ठीक है दीज आर मेजर रिवर्स ऑफ कोर्स वी कैन हैव ए कंफ्लिक्ट बिकॉज दे हैव अ लॉट वॉल्यूम ऑफ वाटर बट भूटान शिफ्टिंग रिवर्स सो वी आर नॉट क्लियर अबाउट द बाउंड्रीज
but this is a small country we do not fight over it but of, of course whenever the countries meet they uh, make it a point to inform each other that uh, this is a problem area they always tell shifting channels so there will always be skirmishes okay the streaming is pause and play in every 10 15 seconds is it happening with everyone or probably uh, you are facing some difficulty with your internet i guess pradyam you need to check okay that you want that that's not happening deepak <laughs> we uh, yesterday only we talked that uh, we are not a expansionist state until and unless some country is willing sikkim has a plebiscite okay so it wanted to be in india so everybody is clear with this and most probably uh, after these explanations i'm pretty sure that most of you can write better answers kyunki uh, jo nayi cheeze hui hain whatever is new thing is happening if you are aware of that thing after mentioning these features only you will be in a position to write good points now geographical point of view we have seen let's see it from the economic angle how traditional economy i'm not talking about uh something the modern times it is also influencing but how traditionally uh some of the similar things and some of the disputes are happening okay traditionally everybody was was a agricultural country of course we were so the economic angle of the relationship this economic angle now if we look at our neighbors mostly what we are doing most of them are agri grade basically they are dependent on agriculture so if all of them are producing similar things the chances are really high that they'll have conflict why because they want the same market to sell their products right so if we talk about indo pak we both are producing basmati rice and this is uh, something which has a greater value as compared to rest of the rice so instead of consumptive purposes usually both the countries are focusing on selling this rice into the international market and there we have competition right both of us produce cotton traditionally and this is also a eco, has great economic value it has demand as well theek hai to pehle traditionally kya hota hoga traditionally the dispute was to capture the markets which are nearby today we are fighting many a times in wto as well over same things will be complaining that this country is giving uh subsidies so we are having a problem theek hai so it is part of the international negotiations and relations as well theek hai now let's say indo bangladesh the culture is same the soil is same so we both are fighting over jute and jute products theek hai 
अब यही प्रॉब्लम लेके हम क्या है डब्ल्यू में भी चले जाएंगे टेक्सटाइल इंडस्ट्री को लेके प्रॉब्लम है आइदर विल से दैट एग्रीकल्चर में उसको बेनिफिट है सो नोट दीज थिंग्स डाउन वेन विल बी रीडिंग एवरीथिंग इन डिटेल दिस नोट विल मेक रियली थिंग्स इजियर फॉर यू and this is the thing which is actually required the understanding part if you understand the things how these things have evolved how they are playing the role even today then you will be in a position to score better marks than others and like i said whenever you are doing this thing try to draw a rough sketch it will give you edge over others theek hai now indo china now they are the बिटर कॉम्पिटिटिव इन वीट फर्स्ट सेकेंड राइस फर्स्ट सेकेंड टी फर्स्ट सेकेंड वॉट एवर मोस्ट ऑफ द क्रॉप यू नो सम वन और अदर अभी इनका रैंक वन और टू ही रहता है तो इनको क्या है सबको सिमिलर मार्केट चाहिए सबको डब्ल्यू में छूट चाहिए सभी लोग क्या है कि अब ये चीजें हैं ये हमने क्या है एग्रीकल्चर रिलेटेड देख लिया अगर हम क्या है कि मैन्युफैक्चरिंग की बात करें If we talk about manufacturing, तो manufacturing के लिए क्या चाहिए आपको Investment. So each and every company is country is competing for investment. तो यह भी एक दुश्मनी का कारण है Negative point. Yeah, we'll be taking care of that. From tomorrow, we'll be taking one nation at a time, and we'll see all the aspects. This is basically to make sure that you understand how these relationships have shaped, and this is to ensure that with this understanding, you'll be getting more out of whatever we are going to discuss. ठीक है? Answer लिखना होगा, it will be, uh, become easier for you. ठीक है इन्वेस्टमेंट के लिए कंपीट कर रहे हैं मार्केट के लिए कर रहे हैं ट्रेड डेफिसिट इज एन इशू अभी इंडिया ने बायोलेटरल ट्रेड्स नहीं है अच्छा चाइना के साथ सो इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू अंडरस्टैंड द इंटरलिंकेजेस दीज डिस्प्यूट्स द ट्रेड डेफिसिट यू थिंक इट इज इकोनॉमी बट इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ वॉट the geographical conditions which is actually making things tough for these neighboring states theek hai yahan clear hai now if we look from the prism of culture we talked about geography we talked about economy so cultural perspective third point is any of the relationship between the neighbors are mostly shaped by these things only theek hai so you need to understand this cultural perspective ki hum baat karte hain agar abhi jhagda hone ke liye suspicion jo humne pehle indo china ki kya baat ki thi the culture abhi isme cultural perspective mein aapka kya hai ki religion way of life language etc theek hai all these things 
are important while shaping india and china definitely in the first point only because of the himalayas we talked about this thing right so indo pak has become what if we talk about religion two nation theory right most of the people believed at that point in time when we got the independence that we cannot coexist together and somehow this perception though initially it was not dominating but it is now shaping our relationship with bangladesh as well the government is pro india but some fringe elements the opposition parties they are creating a situation where we as a population have started distrusting each other theek hai ab yahi kya hai if we talk about indo nepal being projected as hindu hindu still we fight over uh, the himalayan terrain has actually made things complicated and we were not on good terms lekin kya hai but this is a cultural part a point of perspective that exists this perception is real you cannot ignore it because some part of the population even if the majority is not thinking in these grounds but some of the fringe elements who are vocal who are being uh, represented are doing this thing so these things are of course shaping but this we talked about religion right religion is conflict here we were talking about these are conflicting points right conflict based on religion ab yahan kya hai let's see this language now what the language is indo pak punjabi and sindhi punjabi and sindhi is same culture hai yahan wale part mein kya hai ki koi dikkat nahi ho raha hai language bengali similar culture to iske wajah se cheeze theek hai ye cheeze theek bhi kar rahi hai yahan kya hai ki galat dikh raha hai yahi culture ka hi ek part but language ki wajah se kya hai theek hai indo nepal nepali speaking people are there in both the countries culturally practices bhi same hai language some part of culture is also same so culture can create both positive and negative relationship note it down in the economic front i i'll again go uh, i talked about only the negative things in economic we need to discuss some of the positive points of economic as well there is only one two points that we'll discuss and you can use directly this example these examples whatever i am discussing while writing your answers you can do this comparison there can be a question ki what uh, are the aspects which define the relationship between the neighboring countries So, सबसे पहले नेचुरल जो कॉजेज हैं उससे स्टार्ट करेंगे जो अगर हम क्या है कि दिस वर्ल्ड ऑर्डर विच एग्जिस्ट टूडे इवन इफ इट कुड हैव नॉट बीन एग्जिस्टिंग सो दीज थिंग्स कुड हैव बीन नेचुरली डिक्टेटिंग द रिलेशनशिप ऑल दीज एस्पेक्ट आर अन अवॉइडेबल एस्पेक्ट अगर ऐसा क्वेश्चन आता है तो इन दीज क्वेश्चन टेबुलर फॉर्मेट में बनाएंगे ठीक है हमेशा प्रेजेंटेशन अच्छा होना चाहिए 
तो इसको ऐसे ऐसे करके लिखना चाहिए आपको जब भी आंसर में लिखेंगे तो टेबुलर फॉर्मेट में ही प्रेजेंट कीजिएगा यहां लैंग्वेज कल्चर और यहां हेडिंग हो जाएगी कंट्रीज योर स्ट्रक्चर योर प्रेजेंटेशन एंड द ऑर्गेनिक फ्लो ऑफ आंसर अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इट हैज टू हैव ए ऑर्गेनिक फ्लो वेन अवर यू आर राइटिंग एन आंसर द स्ट्रक्चरिंग ऑफ द आंसर शुड ऑलवेज बी गुड एंड द प्रेजेंटेशन शुड बी विजिबल बाई विजिबल मीन्स यूज ऑफ सच थिंग्स विच विल इंश्योर दैट द एग्जामिनर हु इज चेकिंग योर पेपर डू नॉट हैव टू पुट अ लॉट ऑफ एफर्ट टू नो वॉट यू वॉन्ट टू कन्वे बिकॉज यू आर ट्राइंग टू बिकम एन आई एस ऑफिसर एंड ही डजेंट केयर हु अमंगस्ट यू विल बिकम सो इट इज योर रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू मेक श्योर दैट दे गेट इजिली वॉट एवर यू वॉन्ट टू कन्वे ठीक है तो प्रेजेंटेशन पे भी फोकस करेंगे ग्राफ्स स्केचेस डायग्राम्स बनाएंगे ठीक है एवरीबडी हैज रिटर्न दिस थिंग आई होप एवरीबडी हैज नोटेड here we were talking about the negatives in the economic you just add one point that these similarities similarities ka matlab kya products are helping them to cooperate in negotiations in wto and other platforms theek hai ye kya hai ki positive point jo tha economic wala as most of these countries are producing the same things competing for the same kind of market so they are cooperating with each other in global negotiations with the developed world to ye wala point positive likh lenge theek hai everybody is done I hope everybody has noted this down. Now, these factors, the another most dominating factor which is shaping, that we have al already discussed a lot about this thing. The geopolitical. factors yesterday we discussed a lot about cold war so of course you must be aware ki how it works now usa okay so geopolitical factors 
निगोसिएशन में पॉजिटिव यही होगा कि इंडिया पाकिस्तान वॉन्ट गुड प्राइजिंग दे वॉन्ट दैट USA, UK should not give subsidies to their farmers. ठीक है प्रद्युम कुछ जो फायदा लेट से देर इज अ पॉलिसी सम ऑफ द पॉलिसीज ऑफ यूएसए एंड सम ऑफ द डेवलपिंग नेशन डेवलप्ड नेशन इज लाइक दैट द कॉस्ट ऑफ प्रोडक्शन बिकम्स लेस सो देअर प्रोडक्ट इज मोर कंपिटेटिव इन द मार्केट वेन वी डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज आर प्रोड्यूसिंग द सेम प्रोडक्ट our product is costly right so nobody is going to buy our product but the products actual production costs must be same right like we are fighting for uh, intell uh, intellectual property right over the drugs of covid we are asking the west to allow everybody if they will not allow then uh, most of the population is going to suffer so for this thing most of the countries who are suffering will come together and they'll talk to wto right they'll talk to the people who are having this thing so there was a time when there was cold war right so when there was cold war it compelled india for the policy of non alignment okay फिर क्या हुआ यूनिपोलर वर्ल्ड इंडिया ट्राई टू गेट क्लोजर टू यूएसए ठीक है फिर क्या हुआ ठीक है सिचुएशन जैसी जैसी चेंज हो रही है इंडिया का स्टैंड चेंज हो रहा है ठीक है पहले नोट कर लीजिए देन विल लुक एट सम अदर एग्जांपल्स कि हाउ द जियो पॉलिटिक्स इज शेपिंग सम अदर रिलेशनशिप्स डन दीज आर द थिंग्स दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड आई एम गिविंग यू पिक्चर सो दैट यू कैन ट्राई सम ऑफ द ओल्ड क्वेश्चन एंड सी इफ यू कैन अप्लाई दीज एस्पेक्ट एंड कम आउट विद आंसर विच कैन बी टू द एडमायरेशन ऑफ यू सो इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू ट्राई टू हैव अ लुक एट द क्वेश्चन एज वेल okay so you did not understood or understood anish the last point is like when uh, the world is like okay previous slide you understood about the economic thing right grouping now this is related to whatever was happening in the whole world but few of the things which is which is happening in our neighborhood aggressive china contain china policy of usa
इंडिया क्लोज टू यूएस ठीक है डायरेक्टली भी इनडायरेक्टली भी Anish, I cannot uh, understand what exactly you are conveying. You said you understood last point. That is good. So you you are getting this point. The China is aggressive. So of course India has to be closer to some of the superpowers. But it in itself containment of USA policy. now this point is both of them are interested in this relationship china is aggressive contain china policy means uh, ravi that uh, usa thinks that china can be a threat to usa in a long run right they are rivals so it doesn't want china to uh, expand so it always provoke some of the country who are in the surrounding it uh, support some of the people some some of the countries like japan india they are nearby china so in the event of some uh, action by china it can take help of these two countries to contain china okay deepak again you are moving into some other area maybe if we'll have time we can think about it but this is not related uh unipolar world means dominant usa we talked about ussr disintegrated so there was only one mighty country how a time how the relationship between japan and usa is good because they have been cooperating in many of the aspects though usa destroyed japan but uh, thereafter it also made sure that japan did not create any army of itself so it took responsibility of the security of that country and also it helped to cope with the destruction of hiroshima and nagasaki and japan was never interested in fighting any of the countries and china was aggressive so it thought that it is a good idea to have some good relationship with usa so when you whenever you will be reading about some of the things in world history you'll definitely know the equations well okay about those countries and we'll be looking at some of the organization then we'll be talking about how the relationship saved slide niche kare kya chhoot gaya hai ठीक है ये यूनिपोलर सो एवरीबडी इज क्लियर अब जस्ट रवि हैव अ गुड लुक एंड नोट इट डाउन बिकॉज वी हैव लेस टाइम आई नीड टू टॉक अबाउट सम मोर एस्पेक्ट्स इट विल टेक फाइव टेन मोर मिनट्स सो नोट इट डाउन ओके ठीक है अब एग्रेसिव चाइना इंडिया क्लोज टू यूएसए नाउ इट बिकम्स अ थ्रेट टू चाइना एज वेल सो व्हाट इट डज इट कम्स आउट विथ एंड कंटेनमेंट चाइना पॉलिसी में यूएसए ने क्या किया मिलिट्री बेसिस डिएगो गार्शिया आपने सुना होगा शायद अब इट यूएसए चोज ए मिलिट्री बेस इन द इंडियन ओशियन नाउ चाइना फील्ड थ्रेटेंड सो व्हाट इट डेड ए स्ट्रिंग ऑफ पर्ल्स इंडियंस थिंक 
that they have created in a uh, string of pearls to contain india but the reality is china never perceived india as a threat okay but they never believed on usa and there had many of the economic interest actually a string of pearls if you look closely you'll discover that it is making its bases in the areas where usa is interested but usa with its reports with uh, many of the things that it uh, talks about made sure that india always is convinced that this is for us but basically usa was creating many of the military bases it has many of the if you closely look at a uh, string of pearls will be uh, discussing it in details you will discover that though it looks like india is encircled but just beyond those ports usa has invested either in military or in some of the economic aspects theek hai तो यू कैन राइट अबाउट दिस इंडो चाइना में जियो पॉलिटिकल ने कैसे किया अब यही एग्रेसिव चाइना और यूएसए होप इस बार आपने बना लिया होगा इसको ठीक है अब यही दोनों कंट्री इंडिया का अपना डायरेक्ट नहीं है कुछ इंडिया इज नॉट डूइंग एनीथिंग डायरेक्टली बट हैव यू हैव usa and here we have china in dono ne kya kiya अभी इनिशिया पॉल हार्बर दैट इज ऑल टूगेदर डिफरेंट अनिस डियागो गार्शिया इज डिफरेंट डियागो गार्शिया इज इन इंडियन ओशन पर्ल हार्बर इज द पोर्ट वेयर जापान अटैक ड्यूरिंग सेकेंड वर्ल्ड वॉर ठीक है वो डिफरेंट है नाउ यूएसए कोल्ड वॉर एरा में यूएसए क्या कर रहा था पाकिस्तान को इंडिया के अगेंस्ट में यूज कर रहा था ठीक है क्योंकि बाकी रशिया वॉज कम्युनिस्ट इट वॉज परसिव एज अ सुपर पावर चाइना वॉज कम्युनिस्ट सो इट वॉज नॉट इन ए पोजिशन टू बिल्ड गुड रिलेशनशिप विथ दैट कंट्री इट ट्राई टू बिल्ड अ रिलेशनशिप विद इंडिया बट जवाहरलाल नेहरू और फर्स्ट प्राइम मिनिस्टर made sure that we are perceived as non aligned country but america was adamant either you are with us or you are with russia so it self declared that india is with russia so it started tampering with pakistan it made sure that pakistan is troubling india every now and then after this unipolar world collapse of ussr china wanted to become the giant of south asia so it wanted to subdue india which was getting close to usa china has aspirations of becoming the super power of the world like usa so again it couldn't do directly anything to india so it started playing with pakistan it provided it with uh, nuclear technology it helped it to with arms it helped with money so that these pakistan the nation can train some of the terrorist to come to india and disturb india so india was always at threat without doing anything india was not doing anything it was getting influenced by some of the events that was happening around the world some country which is far away had some perception about india 
had some perception about some other country and it starts behaving in a way with some other country which indirectly influences our country so geopolitics since historical times it had always an influence on the relationship that existed between the neighbors theek hai so i hope uh, these things are easy and you can understand and uh, you can use such representations i have done this thing only to ensure that you understand how to write your answers while writing your answer if you do this thing probably you will be saving 40 50 words at least and a lot of time as well maybe if you save one more minute in every answer you will be writing some different aspect it is not about the number of words the answers are always about how well you cover the different aspects related to any of the subject matter so excessive use is not good but of course after writing some of the points you can use flow diagrams in your answers you can make some of the rough sketches you can draw a diagram a sketch maps right so everybody noted this thing these are the factors which will always influence the relationship with the neighbors some of the points will be added you can remove some of the points if it looks to you that some other point is more important your geography will dictate economy will dictate your cultural aspect will dictate and geopolitics of course will dictate right so i hope uh, this thing has given you a glimpse of the relationships plus the discussion has also given you a glimpse about how to deal with your answers how to write your answers so maybe even if some of you have not joined any test series or you are not writing any test you need to make sure that you try writing answers some of the times because some students think that there will come a day when they'll they'll be very sound with everything and they'll start writing and they'll come a answer which is perfect it won't happen it is very very important that you try to write one answer at least one two answers every day and if you'll compare with yourself with some of the friends maybe you will know that how you are faring and uh, also you can try to join some test maybe after completing your course that will help you improve but try to write answers so uh, i think uh, we are done with today's lecture you need to have your meal because i think you are, you are having more classes as well khana khana bhi zaruri hai okay but uh, the instructions are like okay you need to remember this thing and try to practice ramba okay so uh, i think i'm done with this lecture i want to, all of you to make sure that you revise the things keep looking at the things the notes uh, i have provided in you uh, you in a way that after looking at the headings only you can remember most of the things so keep looking at that even if you are not getting uh, much of the time if some of you must have joined uh, optional classes as well yeah sazil i'll be sharing my number like i said uh, maybe in few days i'll definitely share my number at this point in time uh, i'm not doing this thing with a purpose only so that you do not get deviated and try to ask questions personally at this point in time because i want you all of you to come with some of the questions which can help other students as well but uh, be sure uh, before the completion of the courses i'll make sure that i'm sharing my number with you theek hai kuch din mein main pakka dunga jab uh, you'll start uh, asking some of the questions which can help rest of the guys but if you are understanding everything that is uh, really good for me as well at least i think i can connect uh, with you in a way that so that i can make you understand everything okay sazil you got my point so it is uh, the time is over have your meal and make sure that you have a look at these things and any of you found difficulty in understanding any of the parts let me know
just ask questions so that you can have more clarity but stick to the syllabus only do not go beyond syllabus yeah deepak enjoy your time as well so have your lunch rest well and then start with the studies no pa i won't finish it within 10 days it will take some time because uh, there are a lot of things sazil hindi or english compulsory paper uh, maybe you can read newspapers and uh, you'll clear the paper you won't be you'll not be finding any difficulty i haven't seen many people uh, preparing for compulsory papers but if you want to prepare read question papers it's always about the language if you know how to write english and hindi you'll qualify some of my friends used to qualify the paper after looking at the instructions only they used to copy the words that are given in the instruction and they'll write the answer and they'll qualify 130 lane hote hain koi dikkat nahi hone wali hai you'll qualify okay guys have a nice time we'll meet tomorrow same time and we'll be discussing next of the things okay stay healthy and blessed take care